Hello everyone! When I started learning Spanish last year, I was pleasantly surprised by how simple the language is and by how easily accessible it is to get resources. So if you are looking to learn Spanish, you've come to the right place because I'm going to share with you all of my favorite apps, YouTube channels, podcasts, resources, and a really cool Google Chrome extension that I found. Before I start, the most important thing if you take anything away from this video is that you must use a combination of resources. When people want to learn a new language, the first thing they usually do is Google how to learn language name. And you probably get resources like apps like Duolingo, which is good in itself, but it shouldn't be your primary resource because you're going to end up saying stuff like, the purple cat is eating under the tall table and you don't even know how to order coffee in Spanish. So for all the resources I'm mentioning in this video, make sure to supplement it with something else for your learning. Okay, without any further ado, let's talk about the apps that I use for Spanish. The first one is a relatively new app called Forge. Forge is specifically for Spanish, and as a UI UX designer, I really like the interface. It's so clean and beautiful, and there is so much in-depth grammar explanations. And the best thing is that it is free. Next, the two dictionary apps I use are Spanish Dict and Conjugato. For Spanish Dict, I use it to find the meanings of words or to look up new words that I haven't learned yet. They also have a website and an Instagram account where you can see a word of the day. I actually subscribed to their word of the day email a while ago and I wrote down all of their example sentences in here. Some of the words are like really random, like fairy or jam, <laughs> but by writing it in here, I had access to uh, the example sentences that they had and I thought it was really great that they're not just giving you words, but actually sentences. Then if you're looking more for grammar or vocabulary exercises, some apps I can recommend for Spanish. Number one is Busu. It is a paid app. I think there's a free version to an extent. I made a full review video of Busu here, so you can check that out. Then for vocabulary, you can look at drops. Now be careful with drops. Personally, I think it is a little repetitive and boring and very slow because you're just matching like words and pictures and it's just vocabulary there's no example sentences there is built-in sound so you know how to pronounce the words so if you're really just looking to up your vocabulary based on themes i do recommend drops for that purpose but not as your main primary resource for learning spanish again a supplement that might be helpful to pick up new words and then of course we have the standard Memrise and Duolingo. Memrise has a bunch of courses on different topics. There's also videos and sound, and it is also free, so you can check out that. Everybody knows Duolingo. I'm not gonna go into depth, but if I just switch to Spanish over here, the thing I use the most is the Duolingo stories. So you can see I've completed so many of them already. Uh, they are really funny. They have all of these like plot twists and it's just simple. Uh, phrases related to daily conversations. This is, again, chunking full sentences and sentences that are actually used in conversations, not just random stuff like the green owl is eating a salad. Okay. Then one of my favorite apps of all time, and I think if you've been watching my YouTube channel for years, you'll know that I mentioned them way back in the day. It's High Native. High Native is also free to some extent where you can ask questions to native speakers. Right up here, I have said that I am learning Spanish as well. So you can browse questions that people have asked before, or you can just ask your own question. For example, how do you say this? Does this sound correct? Blah, blah, blah. Super simple, easy to use. Excellent. I find that the replies from people come in pretty quickly. So it's a really good resource if you just want to check something. Maybe you've created some example sentences and you want to see if those are right. Speaking of sentences, the two last apps I want to recommend. The first one is Close Master. It's really fun. It's like gamified. You, there are so many languages you can learn on there. This is Close Master. It's really cute and it is free to play. You don't even need to create an account, so you can just click on play. For example, here we have a sentence where I need to fill in the blanks. It is La chica lleva una something alrededor de su cuello. I am sorry, my Spanish is not great yet. The girl has a scarf around her neck and I know the word for scarf is bufanda, so I'm gonna click on this one. And there you go, you just fill in the words like that. Super fun. Okay, the other one is like one of the weirdest language learning apps I've seen. It's just called Spanish Sentence. I don't know, the title is cut off actually. Spanish Sentence Maker, Spanish Sentence Creator. I don't know, I, I, I will put it in the video because I can't see the title right now. Uh, yeah, it's, it's 
pretty weird looking. I think they kind of copied the UI from, from Jobs, but that doesn't really matter. They give you full sentences and you need to say, you need to put the words in the correct order. So this is, uh, he's the one, isn't he? So it is, uh, es el, no? And then they tell you that you are correct or wrong. And there's also audio. The function I like the most is where I go to this little middle tab here and they give me all of these sentences in one space. I, I don't know why they're all in like random colors, but hey, at least you have a free resource with a whole lot of sentences. And finally, the resource of all resources is the Bluebird app. It is not super beautiful i'm using it for hungarian currently so the design is a bit weird but they have so many languages for free you can differentiate between spain from mexico and wow spanish from spain or spanish from mexico so i'm just going to choose a mexican over here and they give you a collection of audio lessons so usually i listen to these in the shower uh and yeah it's basically free uh, audio lessons that you can access lots of hours of listening practice Next, my ultimate favorite way of getting Spanish immersion is through podcasts. I am obsessed with listening to podcasts uh, because I do a lot of creative designing work. I don't need to like type or focus too much, so I can listen to podcasts in the background. I use podcasts as my main base to pick up vocabulary, and I don't actually write vocab lists uh, despite what I put in, in, in this notebook. I really don't write down a lot of my vocab because the more I listen to Spanish, the more I'm, like these words are just gonna pop up and I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, that person said that word before. Okay, I know the word now, right? If it's relevant to me, I will remember it the more I hear it. I have so many favorite podcasts, but my top five are La Vida Milimal. It is short, sweet, and simple content about minimalism. Then Y Que Te Llevas is pretty interesting. And then we have Cristian Burgos Coria. So he is a Mexican celebrity who lives in Korea, and he talks about various topics in Spanish. Diseño y Diaspora, which is more about social design issues, more relevant to my field of work. And lastly, Entiende Tu Mente, which is really cool too, so you should check all of these out. On a similar note for like listening practice, there is of course a plethora of YouTube channels. I don't even know where to start, but let me just mention a few quickly. The first one is Mextalki. This is specifically if you are learning Mexican accent Spanish or like words and phrases relevant to Mexico. Uh, the two guys who run the channel are really funny. They talk about like interesting daily topics, so you should definitely check out Mextalki. Then if you are learning Spain Spanish, what did I knock over? Oh my goodness. <laughs> then if you are learning Spain Spanish, you can check out Dreaming Spanish. My friend Pablo runs the channel. We actually made some videos together. I'll put those in the description. Um, but I love his videos because he just talks about general everyday topics and he categorizes them into beginner, intermediate and advanced Spanish listening practice. It's great for picking up vocab and getting a natural pace of uh, the Spanish language. And then because I am very interested in minimalism, there's also a ch ch channel called Paula Simple. Pa Paula Simple? Paula Simple? She talks about minimalism. She is Argentinian, so her accent uh, takes a little bit of getting used to, uh, but I think it's really cool to watch something related to minimalism, so you can check out her channel. Okay, as you can obviously tell by now, I don't spend a lot of time like sitting at my desk studying from a textbook. I like to more integrate the Spanish language into my daily life kind of passively. So one of the coolest things I'm so excited to tell you guys about is a Google Chrome extension I found called Toucan. And basically what that does is takes anything that you're reading in English and changes a few words to Spanish. Over here, I am reading an article about uh, user personas and you can see Everywhere where there's blue, it has converted the English word into Spanish for me. So the entire article is still in English, but there's these vocab words that they replace for you. Also, something else I love about it is that it has audio. So let's say I'm hovering over this word, uh, which means knowledge, and I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. I will just click over here. Conocimiento. Conocimiento. <clears throat> Wait, let's try that again. Conocimiento. 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 See, look, Toucan even works on my own website. This is really cool. Look at that. Funky. They also have other languages like French, Portuguese, German, and Italian. And a little bird, 
pun intended, <laughs> tells me that they're going to add new languages soon. <clears throat> Korean, <clears throat> Japanese, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, uh, super, super cool. I use this extension all, like it's permanently on on my Google Chrome. So sometimes it's a little weird when I get a brief at work and we're talking about like tech and design and then there's these like random Spanish words in there. Um, but I think it's amazing immersion because when I'm just like passively browsing and reading, I'll see all these Spanish words which are relevant to what I usually read online. Basically how Toucan works is you just download the Google Chrome extension for free and then you turn it on. You can then turn it on and off easily so it doesn't bug you when you need to work. I'll put the link to Toucan in the description if you want to download it and get some fun immersive Spanish learning experiences right into your browser. Continuing into the internet space, I love reading blogs. Uh, I follow this guy on Instagram. His name is Ivan. He is from Mexico and I realized he has a blog about language learning. I don't know how to pronounce it. I think it is El Teachercito, El Teachercito, El Teacher, I, I don't know, <laughs> sorry. But he is learning French and he blogs about his language learning journey in Spanish. So really cool website to check out. I highly recommend that. And then probably the main source of my reading is medium articles in Spanish. You can just search a term that you're interested in, whether it's like history, art, design, psychology, relationships, uh, current affairs, whatever. And uh, there are a lot of articles in Spanish as well as English. And when I do design research, I generally look it up in Spanish on medium. To finish up, let us talk about books. This book I absolutely love. It is called Short Stories in Spanish for Intermediate Learners by Ollie Richards. It is amazing because the stories are like really interesting and funny and they give you vocabulary words in it already. So all of the words that are bolded are words that they think is relevant to your level. And then at the end of the chapters that you read, you get an entire vocabulary list. You also get a list of practice questions to test your comprehension. There are eight stories in it and it's really engaging and fun. And uh, Ollie is a Spanish language learner himself. So it's like really crafted towards uh, language learners. I will put the Amazon link to this book in the description if you want to buy the beginner or the intermediate version of short stories in Spanish. I also have it for French and Arabic. So yes, I love it a lot. Let's just put it, put it here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Finally, you will see that I didn't mention a lot of textbooks because your yeah, girl is busy and <laughs> I don't really sit down to study, but I do have two textbooks that I use. The first one, which I have talked about before is a Japanese book. It is called Mi Diario en Español, and it's basically on how to write uh, a diary in Spanish. So it's really relevant to me. It's like daily topics. If I want to just journal in Spanish, all of the ways I can do that are in this book. And the next one is Complete Spanish Grammar by P Practice Makes Perfect, Mc McGraw-Hill. Yes, uh, I used to use this for Japanese and I just like that it is so like it's just grammar that is nicely laid out. I haven't progressed very far in this book, uh, but uh, I will also put the link in the description if, you, if you're like more into grammar studies, which I think is a great supplement. So if you're using something like Toucan where you can glean a lot of the vocabulary, you do want to supplement your vocab learning with a grammar resource. Then lastly, speaking practice for Spanish. Two apps for language exchange. The first one is uh, Tandem. I have spoken about Tandem in this video. You can check that out. And then also HelloTalk, which I've spoken about in this video. Basically what you can do on those apps is find native speakers. They are both free, so you can find people to talk to. You can also create your own like uh, daily vlogs where you practice speaking and you just post it online. There's a ton of these speaking challenges you can do. I think it's the 30 day record yourself challenge. Just search for those on Instagram, Tumblr, or Twitter. You can do that. Then again, I take uh, italki lessons every Monday for half an hour. It's really short, but it's just enough for me to feel comfortable speaking at my <laughs> basic level in Spanish. I mean, I could be talking to my own Spanish friends, for instance, but sometimes it is really nerve wracking when you're a beginner to just start talking to people. You're kind of worried you're going to make mistakes, but I do feel like having conversational or structured classes is kind of a safe space where you are allowed to make mistakes. Like the teacher is not going to laugh at you. They're there to help you. That is why I take uh, conversational classes. Again, this video is not sponsored by italki, but if you do want to get a $10 free credits after you book your first lesson, check the link in the description for that. Okay, I can go on forever, but these are my top resources for now. I hope you found them useful. If you have any Spanish resources that you want to recommend, 
leave them in the comments. And finally, I also have a Spanish resources page on my website, which I regularly update. So do check out lindybuitis.com slash Spanish dash resources. And as usual, have a wonderful, wonderful week, and I will see you in the next video.